Hey, what's going on? Do you want to know how do you hook up your internet to your home? Maybe you've got a couple different components like a modem and a router and you're wondering how do those work together? Or maybe it's even something complicated like this that you've seen in a house and you're just wondering what is all that stuff and how does it work? That was the case for me. I moved into a house I was pre-wired for internet and I wasn't exactly sure how it all came together. But after researching, I learned it's actually a lot simpler than I thought. On the surface, it sounds and definitely looks more complicated than it actually is. So I'm gonna explain it to you quickly and efficiently in easy to understand terms. So let's not waste any more time and jump right into it. All right, so the first thing in order to set up your internet is you're gonna have to buy it from a source. They're called ISPs, which is Internet Service Provider. And this is extremely location-based. So in a lot of locations, such as the one that I live in, you pretty much only have one option. There are some other options, but they don't compare in terms of what they offer. And really what it comes down to is the more speed you get from your internet, the more it's going to cost in general. Now this can be tricky and confusing because there's a lot of marketing that goes on and they're always trying to bundle it up with something else like maybe a security system or TV or phone or something like that. But when shopping for that value, I would look for the speed that you need at the best price you can get it. I'll link an article below that'll help you determine how much speed you need. Now, once you buy it from an internet service provider, it's gonna come into your house some way, usually one cable, something like this, and then you're gonna have to plug this into something. Now, another cool thing about ISPs is most of them are gonna offer you a one device solution to all of your home network and internet needs. And they do this for two reasons. Reason number one is to make money because on your bill, you'll notice they're gonna charge you a monthly fee for that hardware, for that device. And let's say that that device costs $100 and they charge you 10 bucks a month. After you've had it for 10 months is how they make money. On that 11th month, they made a little bit of money. The other and possibly more important reason they do it is to just make it simple and easy for you. And the way they do that is they make it an all-in-one device. And really that device is doing four things that you could buy individually as its own device. And that's what I mean by all-in-one. It's combining these four functions to give you one device to just make it simple. You plug it into the wall for power, you plug your internet source into that box, and then you have everything you need. The only other thing you'll have to do is set up the Wi-Fi, which they'll give you instructions. Here's the username, password, and you can change that if you want. So you might be thinking, okay, well, if it's that simple and easy, then, then what's all that other stuff and, and what's it for? Sometimes you might want or even need more than what that one device can offer you. So to help understand, I'm gonna explain what each one of those individual things I'm talking about that is being combined into this one device does. And that should help you understand why you may want or need more of each one of those individual things. So let's start from the beginning. First, we're gonna have this signal right here, okay? And that's gonna plug into what's called a modem. Now here's a modem, and that's all that this is. It's a single device, it's a modem. And all you do is you plug this in, just like that, and you're also gonna have a power source. You're gonna have to, the part that goes into your wall outlet is also gonna be plugged in. And then you're gonna have an ethernet jack, where you can take this ethernet cord and plug it into here. And what this modem does is it takes your internet service provider signal and you can almost think of it as a translator or a converter. It's gonna convert this signal into usable internet. That's the simplistic purpose and what a modem is and does. So you can see here, we've got this one internet connection here, but in order to connect to this safely and in order to connect a bunch of devices, we're gonna need what's called a router. All right, so now we take this and we connect it to a router. All right, most routers today are three in one. What I mean by that is it's a router, it's also a switch and an access point. And really all a switch and access point is, is different ways to connect your devices to the internet. So if it's an access point, that's broadcasting a Wi-Fi signal and allows things to connect wirelessly. Now a switch is the opposite where you're gonna connect it with a wire. Now most routers have a port to connect the signal from your modem into the router, and then they're gonna have one to four ports where you can wire in a device. Now let's say that you take up these ports right here, or it's like the Euro that I have, it only has one other port to connect to the internet, but let's say that, hey, I wanna wire four or five other devices. That's when you'd use what's called a switch. 
which is what this guy is. So it's not an access point and it's not a router. It's simply just a switch. And the easiest way, at least for me to think about a switch is it's just like a power cord. You need the source where you plug into the outlet wall, which is okay, this usable signal coming off my router, I'm gonna plug it in. And now these other ports can go to different devices. So you could also think of it as like a splitter. You know, you put one in port and now all the ports are active and you can plug multiple things into the device. That's why I say that this is not only a switch, but an access point and a router where all that this guy does right here is act as a switch, which just allows you to plug more things into your internet with wires. All right, and then an access point would be similar to a switch, might look something like this, to where all this does is broadcast Wi-Fi, and it's gonna need to be connected to the internet, and we're gonna connect that with a wire. That's what an access point is, but pretty much all the routers you're gonna buy today are gonna do both. It's gonna take the signal from your modem, you're gonna plug it in, and now you can connect devices with wires or with Wi-Fi that's wireless on here. And then what most internet service providers are gonna give you is something that combines these two devices into just one all-inclusive device. So that all you have to do is plug in the source, and then the ports coming out of it, you can connect to internet, and it's wirelessly putting out Wi-Fi and you can connect to it. It's an all-in-one device. So now that we understand that, let's think of why someone might want and or even need something more than just that one unit. Well, if there's only three ports on it and you need to connect seven things, then you're gonna have to use a switch. Or let's say that, yeah, it's broadcasting Wi-Fi, but I can't get it in the bedroom. It's too far away, it doesn't reach. Well, then you're gonna want an access point. Now, access points are unique because you can actually connect them wirelessly which is referred to as Wi-Fi mesh routers. So a lot of the routers you can buy today are gonna to be a Wi-Fi mesh router, which basically you're gonna plug in one router into your modem, and that's gonna broadcast some Wi-Fi. And then you're gonna put another one of these somewhere else where it can pick up that Wi-Fi signal and then broadcast its own, allowing you to reach farther and reach the whole area you're trying to cover. And most of those mesh Wi-Fi routers are also gonna have the option to where you can actually plug it in with a wire, in which case that would be considered more of an access point rather than a mesh Wi-Fi router. I'm just trying to help you understand the difference when you hear that mesh Wi-Fi router, it's basically another access point that's connected wirelessly. And when you hear access point, it's basically something that is gonna put off Wi-Fi that's connected with a wire to your router. All right, now other than the actual wire having to plug something in and not really being mobile and being plugged in, having a wired connection is better. And because of that, some people will choose to wire in things that are stationary and not mobile, like maybe a TV that's on the wall. But unless you're gonna run a really long ethernet cable and plug it into your TV, that's gonna be pretty unsightly. So you wouldn't do that unless you live in a house that is wired for internet. And a lot of times they do this when they build the house, they'll call it like it's pre-wired for internet, or sometimes even older houses or just people that are in need of wired connections will retrofit the house to be wired in a way that you can connect different devices and rooms. Basically, it'll be a jack on the wall that'll have an ethernet connection and then all those wires will run behind the wall and come to one central location. And that's basically what it means when somebody says, hey, this house was configured or pre-wired for internet. All right, so to recap, all you really need is the one device your internet service provider gives you, you plug it in, it's gonna broadcast a Wi-Fi signal, maybe you have a couple like hubs or something that you plug into that and you're good. And if that suits you and satisfies your needs, then don't overcomplicate it, I would just leave it there. Now, some problems might come up, one being, hey, the Wi-Fi, this is in the basement, it doesn't reach the upstairs bedroom, in which case you're gonna need another device to push out that Wi-Fi. Now there's different ways of doing it. It's either gonna be wireless or wired, but going back to that idea, if it's possible to wire it, it's gonna be better. So if you have a home that's pre-configured or the ability to connect the two with a wire that's not gonna be in the way or, or seen, then definitely go that route. And a lot of the ones you buy, I'll put a link in the description of my personal favorite, which is E-E-R-O. I think it's pronounced Eero or Euro or something. The reason I like that is because it's simple and it works. It's a little bit more pricey, and what you're paying for though is the simplicity. You plug it in, you download the app, 
and it just works and you don't have problems with it that's why i use it but my point is with that you can actually plug them in with a wire or you can do it wirelessly with the wi-fi mesh but definitely wire it if possible now another problem that you might have is there's not enough ports on the device to connect all the things that you need to actually wire in like some hubs or something in which case you can just buy a switch and that's going to give you more ports and that's essentially all a home network is i know it seems like some big crazy complicated thing but let's again go look at mine and i'll explain exactly how it works and what those components are and why they're there and hopefully you'll understand it and have the knowledge now to set up your own home network. All right, now let's take what we just learned and explain all these wires in this system that looks really complicated. And let me show you that it's actually pretty simple. The house I live in is pre-wired for internet. So you can see all these wires and cables that are coming into this one centralized location. And even if your house is pre-configured for internet, it's still gonna have that one cable that brings in the internet, which is this guy right here. You don't have to do all this. You can just use that one device your ISP provider gives you, plug it into this, and you're good to go. So I think you can make a strong argument that none of this is really needed. It's more of just a want, unless you're some person whose work really involves a lot of tech. And in that case, you're probably not watching this video. But all these wires come into one centralized location, and I put it in this box, basically. You can see there's a glass door on there. This shuts, makes it look all nice and clean. I'll put a link in the description to this exact one. It was definitely the best price I could find. I saw a lot of others that were not fully enclosed, had less shelves and more expensive. So I was really happy and surprised with how good of a price this is. It even comes with a fan. See, I'll turn it on real quick to keep everything in here cool. I'm gonna turn it off for now because it makes too much noise. It was a really good deal. But you don't need this box. You could just use what I use for my aquarium equipment. I'll show a shot just like a piece of plywood and just put all this stuff on the plywood you could even put it on some shelving or something like you don't have to buy something like this it's totally unnecessary but it looks really cool and it's definitely used in businesses because they might have a lot of it stuff and it just wraps it up makes it look really nice but unnecessary for a home but that's what this is it's called a rack and when you're looking at them you'll see they'll say 6u or 8u the u is just number of shelves how many different things you can put in it you can see this takes up one this takes up one, here's one, this is one, that's all that that means. And all a rack is is just like a box to store the stuff. And sometimes it's not even a box, it's just shelving. All right, so this bottom strip right here with these little switches, all it is is a power strip just like this one. On the back of it looks just like this. And then on the front you have these switches. It just makes it look cool. That's all it is, just a big power strip that's made to fit in the, one of these racks. All right, now we have this one signal, which is right here, it comes down into the box and it connects to this, which is the modem. The back of the modem looks just like the back of this modem and that one wire connects just like that. And then you have your power, which is connected to this guy. All right, and then that one ethernet port has a wire, an ethernet wire connected. And then this, the other end of that wire goes into this right here, which is my router. Now this is a Eero router. It's very simple, and that's why I love it, is because it works. It rarely ever cuts out. You pay a little bit more for how nice and simple it is, but I highly recommend it. I'll put a link in the description. And it only has three connections. One for power, one where you plug into it from this guy, and then one where we have another cord coming out of it. And then that cord is this black wire right here, which plugs into this guy. And this guy is just a big switch. That's all it is. So just like that little one I showed before that has five ports, it's the same thing, it just has 24 ports. So you can see I plugged in one right here. Now these other 23 ports are usable to where you could plug in something like a computer and now it has access to the internet. So all of those wires that are running through the house behind the walls and come down to this one point, we could take those wires and we could just plug them into this switch right here which would mean now if I go to that room where there's a jack on the wall and the other end of that wire is, if I plug something in like a computer, it's gonna have access to the internet. Now this top piece here is completely unnecessary. You don't have to have it. It's mainly to make it look cool and to keep it organized, but it's called a patch panel. And all those wires that come in, rather than just being a bunch of wires that look like this, dangling around, it plugs into the back of this patch panel and then it has a ethernet jack where you can just plug something in. 
And these are basically just little jumper cables that go from the end of the wires that come into the house and then plug it into the switch. So that's all these wires are, that's all it is. It's basically just a little extension cord, just plugging in those two things to make it look a little bit nicer and neater. There's a lot of advantages to it and I'm not gonna explain it because this is a simple video, but it's completely unnecessary is the point I'm trying to make. But obviously you can tell it's easy to move things around. I made it look color coordinated because all the wires in my house have two ethernet cords going to each room One's green, one's blue, and I kept that color scheme here so I could differentiate and easily visually see them. You can see there's places to mark up here so you can label which one's which and easily tell what's going on. And that's it. So you can see it's actually not too complicated once you understand the components and it's pretty simple. Now I took out a bunch of other things that were plugged in here so that it didn't overcomplicate it, but for example, this right here is just a smart home hub. It's the Samsung smart things. Just allows you to like turn off and on lights um, smartly. And what's nice about having a rack like this is I just need to put this on the shelf, plug in the power, and then I take this ethernet cord and just plug it into my switch and bam, it's connected to the internet. I could even take this guy and not put it in here. I could go put it in a room somewhere, plug this end into the wall and it's connected to the internet. That's the advantage of having this whole system set up. Now there's a lot of other things I don't have like NAS network attached storage, which basically is just a big hard drive that you plug into your switch and then you can plug your computer in in another room and since that wired connection's there, you can pull data off just like an external hard drive. People do other things like have actual servers in here, but again, I'm just keeping it simple and I think now you understand this is kind of the basic setup and then you can just plug stuff into it. That's the advantage and why people do it. All right, cool. So I hope you got some value out of this video. If you did and would like to let me and YouTube know, just like, comment, or subscribe. I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you next time.